Hey, folks, welcome to Verified Investing Trade Setups in Action video. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at In the Money Stocks. Dot com. All right, let's take a look at the markets today. The S&P is having a pretty solid day. The Qs, the NASDAQ, is what's leading the charge, though. That's where the big gains are. You can see here the S&P up about 1.65%, which is actually a great move. But if you look at the QQQ, and I'm going to bring that up in the next page here, uh, that is having a monstrous 3.15% gain. While these are big gains, I caution investors not to get carried away and think this market's going all the way to new all-time highs. Number one, and I'm going to lay it all out here why you should not trust this market. Number one, the volume is insanely light. If you look at the S&P, we are now at basically a little after 1 p.m. and we've done 28.8 million shares on the spiders. If you look at the volume candle for today over here, look at how tiny it is. All right, we're on pace to do about 40 to 50 million today for such a major gain in the markets. That is not good volume. And the reason why you don't trust that volume, and we've seen it a lot lately over the last three sessions or so, is because it shows that big money is not heavily pouring into this market. Basically, it's telling you that big money is just sitting on the sidelines patiently waiting for the next bigger move in the market. So I don't trust any move in this market unless you see some volume behind it which signals that institutional investors are getting involved. So that's a concern of mine. In addition, I think the Qs, which are really leading this market today, I mean, we, we have lots of stocks that are down, but it's the NASDAQ 100, the big names like Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and Amazon. Those are carrying this market to the upside. For instance, take a look at Amazon today, AMZN. This stock is up over 5%. I don't remember the last time Amazon was up 5% or greater on a day. That is a huge move. I mean, think about its weighting. If you, if you look at the five stocks, Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Facebook, they make up about 30% of the NASDAQ 100. So to have all of these stocks up around 5% on the day, that's humongous. And what that also tells us is that the rest of the NASDAQ stocks, uh, the rest of the market is up much, much less because if, if this much weighting is up approximately an average of 5%, and by the way, Apple's up more than 5%, but then you have a few of them that are down a little bit less than 5%, or up a little bit less than 5%, but on average, it's 5%. But if, if these mega players are up 5% and the market to the NASDAQ 100 is only up about 3% on the day, then it tells you that the rest of the stocks are a little bit weaker overall. They're up 2% or 1%. They're not participating. So what's making these names have such an outsized move today? And the answer is very simple, folks. You have Prime Day starting for, for Amazon tomorrow, so you're seeing a lot of investors piling in expecting Amazon to have robust mega sales for Prime Day. I look at it as like a sell signal, so um, I'm not shorting Amazon here yet, but I do have a gap window right here and a gap fill right here. So in the next day or so, if we get up into this area, heck yeah, I would want to short Amazon at that point. Um, but that is a, a reason why you're seeing Amazon up so substantially. And then you might say, okay, well, that explains Amazon. Well, what about Apple? Well, Apple is tomorrow unveiling its new iPhone 12, which is the 5G. So this kicks off the 5G um, cycle that we've heard about for two years from analysts about how this is going to be so epic and so huge and it's going to be the greatest thing. And in my head, when I hear that, it tells me that there's short-term upside, but it's probably a blow-off top, meaning that these type of things are always expected for, and literally I've heard about the, the, the upgrade cycle for 5G for two years, right? So it tells you that there's lots of big money that's in these names for this run up, but then once it occurs, they'll probably start unloading. So again, another reason why Apple and we talked about Amazon are up so big, but then also a reason why they might come off these highs, especially for the aspect that the volume in this market is so light. All right, again, tells me a lot of small money is piling in these names and in the S&P and so forth, but it's not the big money players that you want to see for a healthy move in the overall market that's sustainable. And I think that's the key, folks, is that you want to know what's sustainable, right? Because if it's, if it's just a pop up here and then we start seeing selling, you know, then okay, whatever. But if it's sustainable, that means something greater. And I'm not seeing the sustainability of that, especially with the volume in these names. 
Now, Google's trading up over 50 bucks on the day. It's about 3.5%. That's on the back of an upgrade. Microsoft's up about 3%. And Facebook, which has been beaten down. If you look at Facebook comparatively to like an Amazon, you know, this was uh, quite a bit off the highs until today's bigger move. And that's up about 5% as well. All right. So we covered that. You guys know why I'm not a believer that this is a, a longer term push. Um, I don't think that the NASDAQ will see new all-time highs. There's always a chance of it, but I'm, I'm very suspect of it because of the volume and because of these other things. Um, I also think that you have to recognize that as much as the market's kind of forgetting about the tent poles for this, you know, this market, you have to remember them yourself as a smart investor, meaning that you still have stimulus negotiations, which right now are not looking great again. Um, I said it last week, and I'll say it again this week, that this is the week that you have to get a deal done. If not, it's going to be too close to the election, and neither party wants to do a deal that close to the election. All right, the, the, the Democrats don't want to do it because they don't want to help Trump maybe get a few extra votes, and I don't think Trump wants to do it so close because if he loses, then this stimulus is going to kick in just as the Democrats take over, and then the Democrats are going to look good for it, right? So so there's there's both sides that are kind of, if it doesn't get done now, I don't think it's going to get done, and I'm a, I don't believe it's going to get done. Um, another thing you have to remember is we still have COVID cases. We had 57,000 cases on Friday. That number is expected to go up as we get into winter. Uh, yes, we're waiting for news on a vaccine, but obviously it won't be rolled out till 2021 uh, for the public anyways. So you still have a lot of hardships going on with no stimulus. That's going to be a lot of issues for the overall economy. And then you have other things like uh, the Supreme Court nomination stuff going on. I mean, there's just so much out there. And that drives me to believe that you likely want to be exposed a little bit to the VXX, which is volatility in the short term, all right? Over the next couple of weeks, I think that we've seen a drop in volatility here. I think it's going to move back up and we could see a spike getting closer and closer to the election. So keep an eye on that, folks, and we'll see how it all plays out. Um, the other thing to mention too is that we're in a period now where valuations are starting to get very pricey again. And unless we get some clarity on, on earnings, which at this point, I don't think you can. I mean, even talking out to 2021, if a vaccine isn't ruled out till the end of the first quarter or the beginning of the second quarter, by the time it gets, you know, populated to the population, meaning it gets injected to the population in mass numbers, I mean, we could be into the second half of 2021, which puts a lot of this recovery on hold uh, for a lot of businesses. And there's so it's just a lot of uncertainty. And I don't trust markets that are going up sharply on light volume when you have this much uncertainty out there. Now, a couple stocks I do like, folks. I've talked about some stocks that I don't like, like Amazon's move and, and so forth. A couple stocks I continue to like, the marijuana stocks, which I've highlighted for the last couple of weeks. They continue to rip higher. Take a look at CGC. Short-term target's going to be up here, uh, but I actually think it's going to go even higher. I think going into the elections, you easily see this area up here on CGC. And the reasoning, again, is very simple, is that hedge funds were extremely underweight, these names. I mean, if you look at, like, Tilray, right? Uh, Tilray was, look at this long base of consolidation. Down here, I mean, we were only a month away from the elections right here, right? And hedge funds were extremely underweight the chance of a democratic sweep, which if it happens means marijuana is is legalized in the United States, which is huge. Even though these are you know Tilray, Canopy, I mean these are all Canadian companies uh, because the the U.S. marijuana producers they can't be on the publicly traded um, exchanges because it's illegal here. But either way, there's still it's still a new market, and these stocks are extremely extremely under underweight right now with hedge funds. So the hedge funds are clamoring to get exposure because if you get legalized weed uh, or marijuana in the U.S. in 2021, you know, these names are probably double to triple what they are currently right now, maybe even quadruple. So hedge funds right now are going to run these things up into the election. Doesn't mean you won't have a pullback day here or there, but I do think, again, there's more upside. I also think stimulus is coming in terms of infrastructure. So um, I had some call options last week on U.S. Steel. We sold them for 50%, but I think you're going to get some, after a pullback, you want to get back in names like U.S. Steel, um, you know, that have exposure to infrastructure bills and stimulus like that. So just a couple names or some, some little opportunities on the long side that I still like. And I, I do think, again, that we will see um, certain stocks come back in. I think overall, I think I'd be very surprised if the markets make new all-time highs, although anything is possible. But I do think, again, there are opportunities in the mix for names like this. 
of uh, U.S. Steel and the marijuana names. All right, guys. On that note, if you want to follow me on Twitter for, for trading tips and, and information, uh, you can follow me at Gareth uh, Soloway. Uh, again, that's my first name, G-A-R-E-T-H, last name S-O-L-O-W-A-Y. And if you want to come join my service, uh, it's Verified Investing. Um, that's my swing trading service at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Again, our website is InTheMoneyStocks.com. Verified Investing is my swing trade service. Verified Options is my day tra- uh, options service. And obviously, we have the day trading live room as well where I do day trading and we rock and roll there every day. All right, have a good one, guys. Take care.